Hello Varlets! In this video, I'm going to be testing out all the changes that have happened to Psyker introduced in the latest patch, Tools of War. Yes, Tools of War. So, in it, there are three key changes made to Psykers. The first one is Warp Unleashed. So Warp Unleashed basically got changed to... Let's remove all this. Warp Unleashed basically got changed to affect all damage. So previously, it only affected force weapons. And after that change, I was commenting about how this should at least affect all melee weapons. So you should get a, so your psychers can feel like a battle mage when you're on high peril. But they instead went and buffed uh, Warp Unleashed to affect all damage, which is wonderful. So let's test that out. So let's get a, let's get a last pistol for this test. So we have a Crusher. Bambus does 908 damage. On this gunner, 326 damage. Now we will take Warp Unleashed. And so at zero peril, which means not using anything, we should get a free 10% damage. And there we go. Brain Burst is now doing 1015. And our shot to this gunner. Well, it's gonna die from a, it's gonna dive now. Yep. So we were doing 326 before, this should be 350 something. Yep, 356. So that's a 10% damage increase for ranged weapons, 10% damage increase for brain bursts, and of course, it will probably affect melee as well. So why is this significant? Let me clear the field. This is significant because it helps psychers reach new breakpoints for free, just for having the perk active. And this is kind of crazy, and let me show you why. So I'm going to take Cerebral Lacerations and flip it. So let me get some, let me get two full Warp Chargers, which is four. With four Warp Chargers, Cerebral Lacerations, and the new updated Warp Unleash, we can now two Shot Crushers. And just like that. And this is on Damnation, by the way. So with my Psyker's feats alone, we can two shot crushers. The last time we needed, um, the last time we could do this was we needed uh, all or nothing when it was still in its old state where it would buff everything just for having the weapon in your inventory. Now you don't need to. You can just kill crushers with two sh uh, in two shots just with cerebral lacerations and warp unleashed. Of course, you can do the same thing to bulwarks. And by the way, the higher peril you go, the more damage it does because of how warp unleash works. But can we do it to reapers? At 4 stacks of warp charges, unfortunately it's not strong enough. You are lacking some damage. Let me just clear the field again. So I'm going to go and take warp battery to see if we can do that. Let me just let me get my charges. Quicken is so useful now because it gives you 2 warp charges. It makes testing things so much easier. So at 6 stacks, you can ignore the, the extra 4 there, that is a phantom charges that don't count anymore because I, I got warp battery. So at 6 stacks of warp charge from 0 peril, and we 2 tap a reaper. Nope, we cannot do it. How much damage are we missing? 19. We are missing 19 damage to 2 tap a reaper with 6 warp charges. Uh, so not all is not lost yet. Because Warp Unleash works based on peril. So if you start at very high peril, and I'm going to use the right click for this, I think you need to be at 9. Let me go. Let me just get to 90. Okay. Where block that? Okay, this should be enough. 90, 90 peril. 1. And then I quickly guess again. Yep. We can two shot. Reapers, if we play on high peril. So, what this means is a Psyker with only its feats and two shot Reapers, two shot Bulwarks, and two shot. Is that Reaper? Two shot Crushers, two shot Bulwark, and two shot Reapers. All because of the change to Warp Unleash. The next thing we're going to test out is Quicken. And for this, we'll only need one other feat, and that is Psykinetics Aura. So, I have now four charges on me. Let me, just, let me just spend that. Now I have none, and my cooldown is at 
if I kill two elites, I will have enough to cast it again. And I can cast it again if I kill two more elites. I can do it again. So now we have an infinite loop. We are quicken. We can infinitely use Brain Burst as long as we are one-shotting elites. And this is only with two feats, by the way. We haven't touched anything else. This is... This is pretty crazy. When I first saw the patch notes, I already knew that this was going to happen. Because way before um, this came out, I was already figuring out, trying to figure out a way how we can maximize uh, Quicken. And you could use... You used to be able to do this with... Or well, you still can. You could do this in almost infinite loop by stacking maximum combat ability regen as well as having kinetic barrage. But you had to kill six uh, elites. With Quicken, you only need to kill two. And guess what? You can also stick on Wreck and Ruin. That means if you have a facing a whole wall of elites with a whole bunch of shooters around them, you can spam Brain Burst on the elites and set everything around on fire, which will clear up the horde. That is pretty insane, I have to say. Uh, not to mention, we have Wildfire. This is the changed version of what used to be Kinetic Overload. For those of you who don't know, Kinetic Overload used to be a feat where after you had maximum warp charges, any additional warp charges you got would set a random enemy in 15 meters on Soul Blaze. It would just apply four stacks of Soul Blaze to the enemy. And it was pretty meh because it was random and it depended on you getting warp charges, so your build had to be very, very specific for it to work. But with Wildfire, it is good, I would say, after doing some tests. It is not as OP as I thought it was going to be, and thankfully it isn't because otherwise it Psychers would probably literally break the game using Wildfire and Wreck and Ruin together. But the way it works now is kind of like a fire starter, so to speak. Let me show you. Oh, I need my Pogatus for this. Pogatus, Pogatus. Right. So the way it works is I set enemies on fire. I'll set this row on fire. Them dying to set everything else on fire. See, now these elites are on fire, this is on fire, and if I kill this one here, it should set everything else on fire. Now he's on fire, and if he dies, he's gonna set something on fire. Yep, he set him on fire now. So you can see how this perpetually will keep um, Soul Blaze running. Because if one enemy dies to a Soul Blaze, it will set everything else on Soul Blaze. And if you have Ascendant Blaze active, Enemies just need to take one tick of damage for them to be eligible to give you warp charges. And you can basically just keep doing this. Uh, the bigger the horde, the more effective wildfire becomes because it can keep spreading more and more and more. The radius isn't quite that big because you can see they are dying and this isn't being affected. So I think it's about like what? Uh, probably a four. 4 meter radius, maybe 3 meter radius, probably the same radius as Wreck and Ruin, I think. So, Wildfire is good if you're running uh, Pagatas with Ascendant Blaze. I s or maybe even Wreck and Ruin. But that's a bit too a bit too focused, you might as well get the... Uh, there are probably other feats that you can use, but it's definitely a consideration. So, while I'm here, um, there was a nerf that happened, which I didn't cover, unfortunately, and that is to Bloodthirsty. Previously, Bloodthirsty allowed you to get 5 seconds of 100% crit chance after you killed something with the 4 sword special. Now, after you kill something with the 4 sword special, you have 5 seconds to land a hit. And if you land a hit within that 5 seconds, that hit is a guaranteed crit. But it's only one hit. No longer can you kill something and then swing for the next 5 seconds, critting everything in the way. And that's probably for the better because... With the introduction of this uh, four sword, the Elysee's four sword, what I had in mind was you just activate it, swing, and that the next five seconds will be crit. So you just activate it again, swing, and you have a hot clearing crit weapon that is probably stronger than the power sword. Honestly, this makes it more balanced. I think there's another build which I can work with it, but I I am currently well, I'm currently very poor on plus steel and. I need to go do some farming before I can test that out. So yeah, those are some of the changes, the key changes in fact, for the patch that I've covered here. I hope you found them useful. I know I have. Being able to two-shot all old green enemies, as well as 
hitting new breakpoints, having an infinite loop of brain bursts is certainly very good. So yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I'll see you in the next one. Violets.